Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, my name is Josh Fishburn. I'm the chair of the interactive multimedia department, and um, yeah, just want to welcome you and start with some uh, just brief opening remarks and uh, talk about some Zoom hygiene, and then I'm gonna. I'm going to sort of MC the event here and hand it off to. Uh, we have like several alums and current students and faculty here uh, to answer questions, not answer questions, um, to tell their stories about IMM and how IMM and TCNJ sort of fit into their trajectories. Um, so you've already probably learned about the department. You've possibly been to Alliance Day. Um, maybe you've even emailed with us. But really, the purpose of today is to is to tell stories and, and hopefully to um, give you a sense of what um, and ho hopefully we, we have enough variety of, of people here that hopefully you'll see yourself in some of these um, stories. Um, so that's the goal today and um, throughout the, uh, the, the presentation um, you are welcome to post questions in the chat. Um, you can uh, raise your hand to ask questions. Um, and um, all, all that all that we'd ask you to do is just make sure your mics are muted. And I think everyone has really good Zoom hygiene because everyone's here and, and all your mics are muted. So um, seems like maybe you've done this before. Um, maybe been to a couple Zoom things, maybe. Um, okay, so. Uh, Right. Um, okay. So we're we're tr I'm, we're trying to do this kind of complicated recording setup. So so I am like I can't have anything else on my screen. Here we go. Uh, right. <laughs> um, okay. So so what is IMM? Uh, we're an interdisciplinary department. Um, we're a, a home for people who don't really fit anywhere else on campus. Um, may, maybe you'll hear some stories that confirm that, and maybe you'll hear some stories that that do not confirm that at all, which I, I hope actually happens. Um, there are six curricular areas to explore. Um, you've probably heard all this stuff. Um, uh, we started over 15 years ago uh, when, um, when three visionary collaborators kind of came together and decided they want to play, wanted to play together. So a journalist, a computer scientist, and an um, artist. So um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about the department before we, we talk about stories. So. Um, yeah, let's see. So my, how did I get to IMM? Um, I, I, I had a, a previous career as a, as a software engineer at, at Motorola. Um, if, uh, if there's any people who are, who are my age or older on the call, you might remember a phone called the Razor. That's around the time when I, when I worked there. Um, went to grad school, um, started a job, uh, started working at uh, University of Wisconsin at Whitewater. Um, and then this job at TCNJ popped up and, and I applied and uh, immediately fell in love with the place. And the thing I remember about my interview is that um, it's the only place I've ever interviewed um, for a faculty position where there was like a dedicated time to present to students. So like most places you go, you like, you, you give like, you know, fancy like research presentations to faculty members and you meet with administrators and maybe you like have lunch with students. But at TCNJ, it was like, I, my main presentation was to students and then like all the faculty left the room and I could like hear all the unfiltered stuff from students. And actually Brett Ratner, who's an alum, who's here on this call might remember that, that meeting, actually that presentation meeting, because I remember that he was there. I hope I'm, I hope I'm remembering that right, Brett. Um, so, so that's my, that's my I'm a TCNJ story. I'm gonna hand it off to um, the next faculty I see in my screen and that's Teresa Nakra and, and again, the. What I'm handing off to you, the, the prompt is, uh, please tell us your IMM and TCNJ story. And, and, and also if there's time, uh, just something you're working on right now. Thank you, Josh. And it's exciting to see everybody here. I'll try to keep it short, 15 years, 16 years at TCNJ. It's a lot of stories, but um, I guess I'll just say that I, the reason I'm here is because I love music and I always have. And even when I was a kid, I. My instead of babysitting, I was going around giving violin lessons around the neighborhood. So I should have realized back then that that was something I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> um, but um, I've done many things in music, um, and I think my favorite thing to do is to teach it. And one of my music teachers um, back in college used to say that conductors derive their power 
from enabling the musicians in the orchestra to play. And I think that the teacher derives whatever power we have from the um, strength of the work of their students. And so I just, one of the things I love about working in IMM uh, and at TCNJ is the students are marvelous and always surprise me with their creativity and, um, and you know, great ideas. So uh, that keeps me going even in a pandemic. And I look forward to uh, learning from all the rest of you about your stories tonight. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, John is the next person in my, my uh, grid. Hello, yeah, my name is John Kaipoff. How did I join IMM? Um, I started off as a musician, then did graphic design for a while. Halfway through doing graphic design, I discovered programming and uh, programmed web apps for about 12 years, which is awesome. Um, got tired of doing that though. Um, and so I started doing woodworking and now I do digital fabrication and now I'm doing also video. I'll show you a picture of my shop. Usually I'm in my shop. It's weird that I'm actually in this house. I'm renovating my house right now. So I Airbnb'd a, a farmhouse from the year 1740. It's awesome. And it's it's so low tech, it's so awesome. But normally this is, uh, this is my phone, this is also low tech. That's normally where I am. That's my shop at my house. Um, and this week, what did I do this week? Um, I did a lot of projects this week. I made, um, I'm working for SJC Custom Drums and we did uh, a product line for Slipknot. I just mailed out um, more badges. Um, I did Max Weinberg, the drummer of Bruce Springsteen the other day. Um, I also this week made drum wraps for Imagine Dragons and 21 Pilots, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm always working on a bajillion different things. Um, and I like to intersect coding with video, with, with uh, making stuff. So I just, I'm just all over the place. This is our maker space. Brett Ratner can probably talk more about that. So we have this crazy space. It's basically a replica of what I have in my shop, but way cooler. And uh, people come in there and they make all kinds of things. So um, welcome to IMM. And uh, we, I think that's it for now. I, I, I can talk forever. So I'm going to just stop myself here. Thanks, John. Please don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, hand it off to Warren Buckleitner, who is uh, in a very cool hat uh, and next in the grid. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for liking my hat. This is only for to cover up my hair because I haven't. I've had two haircuts in the past year, and I have my next one tomorrow, my third. I'm so excited, but it's really bad. I mean, you can just see it's terrible. Uh, it is gray. Um, I uh, that means I'm I'm uh, wise. That's what that means. Um, the uh, uh, I love IMM. I've taught. I have dogs, and they're having a party, so you'll hear that. Um, IMM is a rare department because the faculty are have such different backgrounds and the students have such different backgrounds. And uh, we basically all are sort of geeks and we're really into exploring and, and uh, breaking things and learning from that and, and trying to make something that um, we're proud of. I guess that kind of sums up a lot of, a lot of the senior projects. Um, the, um, it's definitely a liberal arts program. You, you do learn a good core of basic skills and it's built on a foundation. So when we say it sounds random, it really isn't. There's, a, there's quite a bit of structure in the, in the first two years. Um, and um, <coughs> sorry, that's simmer. Really? Um, <coughs> what else do I wanna say? I think that's it. Uh, I, you guys, yeah. I'll be, I'll be listening. You interviewed gonna... Robin Williams. You got to, yeah, they're going to tell you that story. Oh, when you get here. I was going to the New York Times and he does no, the crazy tell you. magic conference and he knows some of the most famous people on the, on the planet. Warren is the most famous um, person in the group. He's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, actually <laughs> what I worked on today was, um, the Bologna Ragazzi. Oh my God. Guys, really that's enough. Um, uh, the cross, it's called a cross media award. And so it's, it's about, um, children's books made into apps or apps made into children's books or movies. And so I've been coordinating that award for 20 years. So I'm, I worked on that today. Um, yeah, so, it, so, uh, it is an incredible time and it's an incredible, 
uh, uh, place to be. So it's time and place. I think I think uh, it's Chris Alt's turn. It is. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, good to see new faces. Good to see so many but not old faces, but um, the faces of our, our alums. Um, uh, John gave you a little history about the founding of, of the department. I was the first faculty member going back to 2005, the first faculty member who was hired into this new program. And um, one of the reasons why is because um, I like to do a lot of different things. In fact, I have made a career going back through undergrad, through grad school, through um, through my actual career prior to this of not choosing any one particular thing. And I think that goes for a lot of the faces that I see here and, and, and probably um, some of you who are considering IMM. Um, we like doing lots of stuff and we like mixing together lots of stuff and we don't want to have to choose and sort of zero in on, on one thing necessarily. So in my time at IMM, my interests have changed. The courses that I teach have changed. I came in doing a lot of our digital media and graphics stuff and I haven't done so much of that lately because technology has changed. I learn new things. I learn from my colleagues. I learn from the students and follow up on new opportunities. Um, so I tend to teach in an area of our curriculum called culture and technology, where we really talk about, think about um, the impact of technology and media on our everyday experience. Um, and there's a lot of fascinating territory to cover there and always you know, new headlines every day that we can bring into class and, and, and talk about. Um, so yeah, like my colleagues said, um, it's always changing. There's always new opportunities and um, we really love that. That's what we love about IMM and, and we really embrace it. And so I'm sure what you're interested in now, um, you'll have really opportunity to pursue that, but you'll have the opportunity to stumble across new interests that might not even exist yet. And um, we generally are, are you know, good with grabbing hold of that and exploring that. So welcome. We look forward to where you will take us. OK, um, I think that, that's everybody, isn't it, faculty-wise? OK, um, so we're going to hand it to aren't here. We do have uh, animation faculty and, and others, so. Thank um, you. Yeah, so this is this is a representation of our faculty, but not everybody. Um, and and I for, I forgot to say I realized as everyone else was talking, um, I I teach our game design and development courses and and some creative coding courses as well. So um, so if you take a programming class, uh, chances are it'll be with me. Um, and um, and yeah, that, you know that's an area that um, a lot of students are excited about. And um, honestly, like I would, I don't know, maybe the students on the call can can correct me, but. Um, it, Figure, learning how to make a game is a, is a lot different from what you might think if you've never made a game before. So, so some students come in and, and decide that it's not for them, but for the, the students who, who it is for, um, the, the courses in IMM give them a real opportunity to, to dive a little bit deeper into that um, and, uh, and also figure out you know, if it's something they actually wanna pursue professionally. Um, but even if they don't, um, learning how to make a game is a really uh, powerful experience, um, especially with a group of people. Um, it involves the kind of coordination that you, um, it's a huge interdisciplinary coordinating um, effort. Um, so, so it's a it's a useful experience even if you don't go into that industry. Um, I'm gonna okay. So, so we're gonna kind of hand it off. We're gonna have a, a couple featured students at a time here, and that, um, and and don't worry, students. I'll kind of call on you to go, and then, um, and the reason I'm I'm introducing these students in pairs is partly um, in case there are questions, we can have a little bit of a buffer and have maybe maybe some back and forth between the students, but. Um, that's okay if that doesn't happen also. Um, okay, so next, uh, so who are we introducing first, Wes and, and Thendril? And why don't we start with, um, we'll go in reverse and, and start with Thendril. Um, again, the question is, uh, or the, the prompt is if you could tell your IMM TCNJ story briefly, like how did you end up at TCNJ and at IMM? Um, and then just any talk about something you're working on really briefly. So um, Thendril, you can take it away. Sure. Um, lately, I've been doing, I haven't had a lot of time for IMM things since I am 
So I'll start off with my major. I am a junior computer science and I am a major. And right now I'm taking three computer science classes. So a lot of that is happening. And I got into the IMM program at TCNJ. Um, and I kind of was drawn into it because it was so broad because I came in not knowing what I wanted to do. And I like came in and I met Josh at one of those senior exhibitions. I think it was the, the senior, what was it when they like display the senior projects? And I was like, hey, Josh, these games look really cool. And I was like, huh, maybe I'll come here. This is kind of cool. And uh, now I'm here three years later. So um, I'll show you what I've been working on for software engineering. This is a cool little website that I'm working on. It's kind of in, it's an HTML and CSS and in a little bit of Ruby. And just to on my software professor, I put thing one and thing two in here. And I hope she sees it and has a little fun with it. Um, while we've been in COVID, I haven't had a lot of time to do what keeps me occupied, which is a lot of, you know, like hands-on building and theater. I usually spend a lot of my time in the makerspace, hogging the, um, the laser cutting machine and doing 3D printing. The last thing I did was build a set in the, in the theater. I, I missed that, but hopefully we'll get back to it once COVID is over. Okay, yeah. uh, is that, do, do you have more? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think that was the, how I ended up. I'd say so. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I'm gonna hand it over to Wes. Uh, Hi, hello. Um, could you repeat the question one last time? Oh, so like, you know, the question is, the prompt is what, what's your IMM at TCNJ story? So, so IMM and TCNJ are both in there because I'm, curious about both like how'd you end up at tcnj how'd you end up in imm and um and yeah i guess that's it <laughs> and what, okay and what are you working like what do you what's something you're working on right now as as part of that um all yeah. right i'll try to keep it brief um so i came to tcnj as a music education major um because during the entirety of my high school life i pretty much dedicated myself solely and squarely to music. That was pretty much all I did 24 seven. And then a little bit of time passed during my freshman year and I began to uh, become more curious about what I was capable of and really started to question whether music was the only thing that I could do. Because for me, music at that point in time, in my eyes was the only thing I was uh, um, I could reliably do. And I really wanted to challenge that. So I made a very, very, very bold move and decided to switch majors. And I ended up in IMM. And it really challenged me. It really caused me to really redefine a, a lot of the, a lot of my uh, viewpoints and the way I do things. And especially it made me curious and question what it really means to be passionate about something. Because at that point, I thought I could only be passionate about one thing. Uh, but I realized that my taste was much more eclectic and broad than that. I was, I, I really wanted to, um, and I found a lot of motivation in learning and, and actively learning and experimenting and trying new things. And IMM just ended up being the place, the best opportunity for me to explore that part of, my, part of myself. So... That is sort of my IMM story. And that's taking me to all sorts of places, both with further exp exploration with music, with more technical signs of things, with more of the history with uh, previous innovators, which I didn't think I would be so interested with, but yeah, say la vie. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just really was the right place for me. And as far as what I'm working on, um, because of COVID and the way things ended up, I sort of geared my senior thesis to more personal development and seeing how I could not only help myself, but other people. So I'm making a web extension that would essentially, well, in the beginning, it would essentially keep track of how long you spend time on the web. So you could have a, an actual catalog to see how often you spend 
and sort of reflect on that and maybe shift it either less or more or really figure that interpretation out for yourself. But now I'm gearing it more towards a, a specific culprit to distraction, which is uh, YouTube. And I'm trying to set up a web extension to remind people not to spend too much time on it. Otherwise, they'll dig themselves in a rabbit hole. Um, so, yeah, that's essentially what I'm working on. And that's my story. Thank you, Wes. Um, next, we have uh, see Anthony and Ellie, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll go call on them in reverse. So, so um, Ellie, um, take it away. Hello, um, I'm Ellie. I am an, a senior in IMM. Um, so my IMM story. So uh, I actually I I pretty much fell in love with the IMM department from like the moment I went to an open house here. Um, I applied early decision to TCNJ and it's the only school I applied to and now I'm here and I'm still in IMM. So I guess it worked out. Um, I mainly focus on um, game development. Uh, I, I'm one of those people who kind of like knew what they wanted to do, at least for the most part going into IMM, um, but still like a really good program for that because uh, you know games are this like inherently uh, interdisciplinary multimedia thing, right? There's art, there's music, there's programming. Um, and IMM has been a really like fulfilling major um, to explore those things in because I've had the opportunity to uh, experiment with music and animation and art and graphics and web. Um, but also I've, I've had a chance to do like a lot of deep diving into um, game development related stuff. So I um, took both of the uh, programs games classes. And then I've had the opportunity to work on some other games related projects. Um, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Josh and Anthony on a, uh, and some other uh, faculty from across the uh, TCNJ on um, a game a few semesters ago. And I also got to help run games one last semester, which was a really, really fun experience. Um, as for what I'm doing right now, I am working on a uh, game for my senior thesis uh, called Wicker, and it's a sort of first person procedurally generated retro throwback inspired game. Um, and it actually has a demo and uh, a playtest running right now. So I'm going to I'm going to post that in the chat. You guys should you guys should play my thesis game and give me feedback so it can become better. Awesome. <laughs> That's what I got. Uh, thank you, Ellie, and and appreciate the um, I don't know what to call it uh, entrepreneurial uh, approach to recruiting playtesters just now. <laughs> you're the you're the one that told me to. Post I know. It. I know you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> okay. I'm calling you out, Josh. Um, next is uh, next is Anthony Mendez. So I'm gonna uh, take it away, Anthony. Hi, hello, everybody. My name is Anthony. Um, I'm actually in a pretty similar boat to Ellie. I also focus on game design. Uh, as for how I got here though, see when I was a senior in high school, I had no idea where I wanted to go to college. All I knew is that I wanted to work on games. That's when I heard a friend of mine who wouldn't shut up about this cool new major called IMM. He was describing it to me. I said, oh, you get to do some game design, some animation, some music if you're into that, some art stuff. I was like, man, that sounds sick. Where do I sign up? And I ended up applying early decision. And that's how I got here. As for what I'm working on right now, my biggest project isn't one that I can share too many details with because it hasn't been revealed to the public yet. It's a little hush hush. Uh, what I can say though is that it is my thesis project and it's going to be an event that's going to combine my love for IMM with uh, my work as the president for Lions Gaming. So if you're if you're interested in seeing it when it when it's revealed, you can follow us at Twitter at TCNJ Lions Gaming. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Uh, aside from that, I'm actually in an indie study with Josh. Uh, we're working on designing a card game currently, and also after we all graduate, I've actually gathered a group of ten or so students, and Ellie's included. Um, and we're going to try to work on a game once we all graduate and have free time. It's going to be fun. That, that's it from me. Um, do you mind sharing what Lions Gaming is? Uh, some people might. Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Lions Gaming is the second biggest collegiate esports club in New Jersey, right behind Rutgers. Uh, we focus on three main pillars. Those pillars are community, competitive, and career. Uh, for community events, we do a number of things to pander to the more casual side of gaming. 
Uh, we also included in that we did a 12 hour charity live stream last December where we raised over $2,000 for the RAIN organization. Uh, as for the esports side, we've got a bunch of competitive teams for League of Legends, Smash Ultimate, Smash Melee, Rocket League, Overwatch is included in that. We, we do pretty much everything under the sun regarding gaming. So look forward to that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I, I'll just add that Lions Gaming is just one of many student organizations that are, um, they're not really like ours, but they have lots of IMM students. Um, so there's a game design organization, there's SIGGRAPH, which is an animation themed organization, there's AMPED, which is a music themed student organization, and there is um, College Loop Girls Who Code, which is a, um, an organization focused on getting, uh, basically getting more women into tech. Um, am I missing one? Anybody? I feel like I'm missing one. I'm going to get in trouble later from somebody. Um, Okay, well, so, somebody <laughs> find like, out. You talk about SIGGRAPH, right? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so so anyway, lots of like lots of student orgs. Um, so if you're interested in doing stuff outside of class, which which frankly you should be if you're if you're wanting to work in creative fields, um, those are um, you know those are also like as extracurricular stuff you could do um, at TCNJ. Um, so that muted myself. Whoops. Um, that brings us to the end of the student portion. And um, just so everybody knows, we do I do have some time like at the, at the end for just open Q&A. So if you're feeling like, oh, I want to listen to these people and I, I don't want to interrupt with questions, um, uh, don't worry. There will be time for you to kind of jump in and ask questions um, at the end of this sort of next segment. So we're going to bring in our alums now who've been uh, uh, so generous to um, give us their time this evening. Um, and I'm gonna sort of ask the same question of the alums um, and we'll go, let's see, I have, I, this one I'm actually going chron, chron, reverse chronological order. So I'm, no, the opposite. I'm going in regular chronological order. <laughs> um, so we're gonna start with, um, boy, I hope I didn't mess this up. I, did every, I hope everybody in this group I'm about to introduce graduated in 2016, cause that's what I'm saying. Um, and, and if not, I'm just going to blame it on, on my on COVID brain fog um, from the last year. So, um, so let's start with, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we have four people in 2016 here, Brett, Brett, Karen, Rhea, and Nivi. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Brett um, and then kind of we'll go, we'll go in that order. So the question is, yeah, what, um, or the prompt is, what is your IMM and TCNJ story, and what are you up to now? So these are these are alums who've been out either for you know one year or for multiple years. So um, I'm gonna yeah. stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, hi, yeah. So my name is Brett Ratner, um, and I'm actually gonna start with uh, what I'm doing now because that kind of I guess ties into why I came here. But so I actually work at the college uh, with the Department of Interactive Multimedia. Um, so I never really left TCNJ when, when I was done. Um, and so then starting back four years prior to that um, in 2012, when I was looking to where I wanted to go, uh, I feel like many other people here as well, like TCNJ was actually the only school I applied to. I applied early decision. Um, I knew I wanted to come here. And, you know, when I was coming to these open houses, uh, just like the energy, like it's a shame that we are doing this online, not in person, because when I was going here and just the energy in the room in person, it just felt special, it felt different. Um, and that's kind of what triggered me and knew that I wanted to be there. So um, I ended up applying early decision, got in. So the TCNJ, like I said, was the only place I applied to. Um, and then I also had a computer science minor going through TCNJ. And, and it's, I think it's a really good idea going through IMM to pair up with a marketing minor, or a computer science minor, um, a music minor, or even double major, as some people have, have done. Um, and I think many people that either have already spoken or that will speak later on has a similar story where they did an IMM major with a blank minor or double major in some way. Um, and I think IMM really allows, you know, not just within itself to be this interdisciplinary um, course, but allows you kind of to branch out into other uh, majors, which is awesome. Um, so after that, uh, you know, graduating TCNJ, um, I, I came back to, to work here full time and I'm the technical coordinator. So I'm in charge of the makerspace, which has been mentioned a couple of times, um, which is an awesome space. Um, it'll be even better when you guys get here. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, we have laser cutters, 3D printers, CNC machine, vinyl cutters, um, a whole bunch of wood, wood shop tools. Um, and then we have our equipment cage that I'm also in charge of where you guys can rent and check out equipment. Uh, we have a whole bunch of like DSLR cameras, microphones, um, tripods, lighting equipment, all that. And um, as far as like what I'm doing now, um, I'm actually been getting into, so, you know, I'm, I'm really into the whole making uh, makerspace aspect. I, I really took a passion to that when I started here, me and actually John Kaipoff, we took, you know, a room that just had a small 3D printer and a laser cutter to turn that into our, our makerspace, what it is today. Um, but I've also been taking a, a big interest in uh, videography. Um, and I got myself a drone, some nice camera equipment, some lighting equipment. And I'm actually gonna be taking my drone commercial license to exam this Monday. So hopefully if I pass that, uh, I can start doing commercial work flying a drone, which is pretty cool. So that's what I've been working on. <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Brett. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Karen McLaughlin next. Hi, um, I'm Karen, 2016 grad. Um, and now I work as a uh, user experience designer and researcher at a, um, a digital agency called Expand the Room. Um, I've been working remotely for beyond well before the pandemic. So it was an easy transition. But um, yeah, I found TCNJ. I, I think it was the first school I, I, what I visited, the first school I applied to, and then I visited many more and, and came back there um, and, and stuck with that because it really was the multidisciplinary factor that everybody talks about. But um, yeah, I've had many different interests like uh, with coding and design, and it really was a place that kind of married a lot of things and taught me skills that um, I didn't, like know that I would be interested in. Um, and I think that that's like really valuable today in my job because everybody is always so impressed that I can do all of these, like that I have coding knowledge, that I have design knowledge, even though like my main focus is on user experience and research. Um, like just the other day, I was working on something that ended up having, it was a UX uh, tool, but it had like a coding problem that I was able to solve. And I was thinking about how, like, if it wasn't for that background that I had, that it probably would have like stalled out the project because we, I would have to find someone who knew how to fix it, but I could like do it because I had that background too. Um, so that's always been like a really valuable part of IMM to me. Um, and what I'm doing nowadays, like I like to keep busy. I, I'm working my regular full-time job, but then I also have been working with um, this nonprofit called 18%, which is like a mental health Slack community. And I do like the, the website and the graphic design for that. And then I also recently started working with the US Digital Response, which is this organization that's um, that's helping to take government and get it up to speed with like all of the new uh, COVID like guidelines and things like how to get them so that they can deliver services faster. So really in all of those situations, I'm just using all the different skills that I learned to um, kind of combine to do lots of cool different things. And that's what I like. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. Um, and you were you were a graphic design minor, yeah. 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 Okay. So the uh, for, for those for those wondering, that's a really common minor, and and um, I'm I'm gonna just mention that we're we're doing a lot more we're working a lot more closely with graphic design um, these days and into the future. So if you're interested in graphic design, also like um, you know that, that's something to be aware of. I guess we're we're trying to work to kind of cross list more courses and and things like that. So. Um, yeah, because we recognize that they inform each other, those fields inform each other. Um, okay, so who did I have next? Um, I think it was Rhea. Rhea, you ready? Yeah, I'm trying to adjust like how far I should be from the camera because like my hair, so you know, sorry, <laughs> 2021. All right, so um, hi everyone, my name is Rhea. I am also a 2016 graduate of both the IMM department and journalism. Um, I came to TCNJ in 2012, fell in love with the campus. I actually fell in love with the bio department and I <laughs> 
swore I was going to go into stem cell research. I spent my whole life thinking that I was going to do this. And then I got to TCNJ. And in the first 20 seconds, I realized that wasn't for me and immediately dropped uh, my first semester. So uh, the common question that I feel like a lot of students go through is, what can I do now? <laughs> now that you know I've abandoned <laughs> my life's work, where do I go from here? So I picked up journalism first because I've always been a writer um, and I was kind of just combing through like different skills that I had in my head and I knew I could write. So I was like, okay, might as well do that professionally. And then I honestly fell into IMM. I met a couple of students through the Student Film Union, which is an amazing organization, um, who were IMM majors and they were doing all types of cool animation and web design and graphic design. And I was really interested in it. I, I drew, I was somewhat of an amateur artist, I guess, in high school. So I took a couple of classes and immediately fell in love with it. And originally I thought that I was going to do a lot of web design because it paired well with journalism and after my sophomore year I realized I fell in love with special effects and motion graphics so that's kind of what I um, specialized in my thesis was a VR film that was completely like 3D animated and it was really cool um, so yeah and then after I graduated in 2016 I got a job working at CBS News doing like broadcast motion graphics graphic design stuff like that and stayed there for four years and now I'm at Discovery doing product design. So I'm working with the newly launched uh, Discovery Plus app and it's cool. I'm doing kind of the same thing, motion graphics and animation. And in my, I guess in my off time, I'm also getting my master's in 3D animation and visual effects. And sometimes I teach courses at TCNJ, so <laughs> yeah. That's my story. Thank you, Rhea. Um, and next we have Nivi. Yeah, and I, uh, Nivi, the prompt is, I think, yeah, tell us, tell us your IMM TCNJ story. So how did you end up TCNJ and IMM, and um, and what are you up to now? Got it. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> I, I just messaged him in the chat that I have completely forgotten the question. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nivi. I'm, I'm a UX designer at Amazon. Um, I When I applied for college, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I'm sure maybe maybe many people shared that story. Um, I For me, it was a process of elimination. I had been really focused on math and science for most of my high school career and then realized I wasn't interested in it, but it was just something that I saw my sister do. So I thought I should be good at it. Um, and I wasn't, I was above average, but I wasn't good enough for really having a passion for that. So then when I got to my senior year, I was like, well, I've spent most of my time in this area that I really don't like. So what do I do? So it was actually a process of elimination where I was like, well, what don't I feel passionately about? And that was a really long list. And I didn't know what I was actually passionate about. So I thought, you know what, art is something I've never tried before. I took one class and, you know, why not try that out, you know, and see if that's where, where my passion lies. And so I actually came into TCNJ as a fine arts major and spent a year there, um, was doing stuff. It was interesting, but I still didn't think I, it was really my passion or what I wanted, what I saw myself doing for the rest of my life. Um, and at the end of my first year, I actually started working at the art and IMM office and then finally realized that in the same building exists another major, which is called IMM at the end of my first year at TCNJ. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I got to know a lot of the department um, folks like Chris and Rachel. And then I got to help out students with the, the curriculum. And then I really understood what IMM was about and just got like a, a very close up look of the major and the courses. And for the first time, I felt like that's something that looks really interesting, combining technology and visuals. And so I thought, well, let's give it a try. And so I uh, got into a couple of classes. And the turning point for me was taking interactive uh, media, is it called interactive perspectives with Chris, um, which is sort of the capstone for the core classes. And there, for the first time, we got to work with a client, uh, the community of Trenton, to solve a problem. And then that actually got a name, which is UX design. And so for the first time, I realized design wasn't just decorative or like poster design as I'd always thought it to be, but could be actually used as a tool to solve problems. 
then I got really passionate about that. And interestingly, UX is something that is developing in the industry more so than even in classrooms. Though I think PCNJ was, uh, at least IMM was one of like really early early uh, departments to actually have classes that indicated about UX design and taught you that. So really became passionate about it, pursued some self-driven projects and more projects with Chris and ended up uh, having an internship at Amazon thought it was really cool. The impact was cool. Having customers use your products is really cool. And then joined Amazon full time after my internship there. And so in my senior year, I did a project in my senior thesis. Um, part of my senior thesis was another Alexa project in, in physical computing. And so when I went to Amazon, I decided that I re really needed to work in Alexa. Like I needed to work in Alexa before I left Amazon. And so then the first year, because of that senior project, actually, I got to go into Alexa and work there for two years on some really cool um, inter-agent interactions between Amazon and other partners like Microsoft and Orange and a couple of other companies. And then currently I'm in Kindle. Uh, Kindle was an opportunity to stretch myself to the next level as a designer. Um, currently, I've actually been considering business schools and am um, at a fork where I'm considering going into business school um, either this year or next year, um, or staying at Amazon and getting my promotion before considering my next steps. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Thank you so much, Nivi. Um, I, I, this feels weird like jumping from one person to the next, but I, I think it's great to hear all these stories and we'll, we'll, ha we'll have time to open it up at the end. So, so I'm, I, I guess I'm making myself feel more comfortable by saying that. <laughs> um, okay. so. Uh, so we have two people left. Uh, so we're get, we're kind of moving up uh, next. Uh, Tori, I think it, Tori is 2019. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm going to hand it off to Tori. Tori, who's um, actually wasn't an IMM major, but I think I think we just adopted you. Um, so so thank you, and I'm going to hand it off to you. Hi, um, I'm Tori. Yeah, I guess I kind of was adopted into IMM. So I'm trying to think my story. It's my story of how I ended up at TCNJ was my whole family went, my grandparents went to TCNJ, my parents went to TCNJ, and then my older sister went to TCNJ and then also was an IMM major. So I guess I couldn't like break the chain. I had to go. It wasn't really an option. So I ended up going for computer science, but what I really wanted to do, I think I've said it since like seventh grade, I was like, I want to make video games. I don't know what I want to do, but I definitely want to make video games when I grow up. So I went into computer science and like computer science is great, but it's not a great creative outlet per se. So I kind of like walked over to IMM and was like, hi, I'd like a minor, please. So I kind of <laughs> just inserted myself into IMM that way, I uh, got a minor, ended up doing uh, all the games courses, as well as some other courses. I really loved it. I love the people. Um, game making is very interdisciplinary, and IMM is a really great place to meet people with a bunch of different interests and kind of get an idea for how to talk to people who really love music and really love art and really love animation and work with them all and bring it together to make something like a video game. So I graduated in 2019, so I guess it's been like a year and a half. I work at EA Sports now, and currently I'm working on Madden. Today I worked on Madden 22. I, I don't know how much I can tell you about it. I was working on online stuff. Um, it's about football, which I know nothing about. I learned what a tight end was this year. It was like crazy. They do something, they run with the ball, seems great. Uh, and I mean, that's that's about it. Thank you, Tori. I don't think you slipped any like sensitive stuff in, into that. We all know what a tight end is now, just in case. Um, okay, uh, last but not least is uh, Robin Friedman who, who graduated in 2020. So I think is, is unique among this group in that um, and that he graduated in, in the middle of COVID. Um, so um, I'm gonna hand it over to Robin. Hi, thanks. Um, so my name, my name is Robin. Um, I think I have a kind of unique story in terms of how I came to IMM. Um, like, like some people do when they're in high school and they're thinking about college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was kind of overwhelmed because I went to a STEM high school and everyone seemed to know exactly what they wanted to do. 
And I just knew that I liked science and technology, so that was fine. I ended up taking a gap year because it was not fine. Um, and I found TCNJ's program. Um, I'd never stepped foot on campus, but I applied to Interactive Multimedia. And at, during Accepted Students Day, that was when I met John. Um, and <laughs> John really got me. Um, and that was kind of when I made my decision um, was was an unaccepted student's day talking to faculty members. And um, when I initially chose IMM, I thought I was interested in making video games. I was specifically looking at like design side of things. And then I found out that I could code. Um, and I'd never really coded anything until IMM 120, which is an introductory course to interactive computing. And that was kind of the start of a, of a journey of me not being sure exactly what I wanted to do, but becoming very generalist, but also still coming back to the coding over and over and over again. Um, I'm interested in user experience. And when I graduated, I thought that maybe I would do web design for freelance because I didn't have a job instantaneously, but um, then, because, yeah, because COVID, as my mom pointed out. Um, and what ended up happening, I got hired for a software engineering position. So they liked that I had some background in, in the coding world, um, but they also saw that I could learn a lot of other things. And I got recruited and developed, and now I'm working at a um, IT staffing company called Infosys. So that's very fun and exciting. The thing that I loved most about IMM isn't all of the different things that you can learn, which are super cool and always sort of changing and getting added to. Um, the reason that I'm on this call tonight isn't just because, oh, I'm just some random IMM grad. It's because I really loved the people who were part of the program. Love, present tense. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have made it so far if it was just the content, although I probably would have stuck it out because it's very interesting to me. Um, but the sort of never ending support of the faculty and staff members and the never ending support of my fellow students, um, whether we're roaming the halls or even during COVID trying to figure out discord maybe as a way to stay in touch with each other. Um, we're flexible and connected and supportive and creative. And if there's nothing else that really unites IMM, it's probably those things. Um, it's a very diverse program and I am very grateful for that. Thank you so much, Robin. Um, the feeling's mutual. I think we we really um, like it's it's so like it's so nice to see all of the faces of our alums here on this call, um, but also really sad that we have we have to be so far away. Um, although to, to be fair, I think we're probably seeing more of them than we would if we had to be in person because you're all able to fly in um, without actually getting on a plane. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's, that is sort of the end of our like planned programming. So, um, so I want to open it up for questions from our, um, from our guests um, and, and from, uh, I guess, from current students to alums or alums to current students. We don't have to, um, although obviously we, <laughs> we want to prioritize our guests here, but, um, you know, if there's some dead air like you have a burning question, um, feel free to ask. Um, and I will, uh, I, I got to do, Warren, how long am I supposed to wait after I ask a question? I'm waiting. I'll give you a wait. Um, it, the longer, the longer you wait, the more people think. So till everyone falls asleep. 10 minutes. <laughs> we have, we have 10 minutes, I guess. You, you have to, yeah, it's an art. It's an art. I'm one of those people who thinks a little slow. 
So if we just give everyone like a nice 20 seconds, it'll feel like forever, but the people who can think a little more slowly will end up coming up with good questions. So Yeah, I'll just say this last thing and then I promise I will not try and fill the space. Um, oh, we, oh, we have a question. Oh, thank God, I, I was getting worried about that silence. Okay. Um, oh, we have more, two questions. This oh. is great. Um, Anthony, do you want to take that first one? Yeah, sure. I can take a crack at it. So uh, the question is from David. For Anthony, are there any minors or classes that go into making big events or tournaments? For example, under business. Uh, truth be told, I'm not sure. I kind of fell into this role at Lions Gaming, quite literally. Uh, the reason I became the president is because the entirety of the e-board graduated and I was the only one left. Uh, but as it turned out, I'm pretty good at planning events and running things. It was very eye-opening. Um, I'm sure, I can't speak for the business major, obviously, but I'm sure there would be some things that could help step you in that direction if you're interested in it. Otherwise, it I would suggest just getting involved on campus and seeing what you sort of fall into. Go ahead, John. Is, is, is Tiffany a marketing major? Is, or minor, I mean? Um, like people I don't know in, if in she's the org? Marketing. I'm just thinking. Okay. So, so thinking about, um, I, I think, I'll, I guess I'll jump off on, on, this, on this question and just say that it is pretty common to my, for, for um, uh, IMM uh, students to minor in things like marketing um, or other, other business related um, minors. So, um, so they go well together. Um, to echo, sorry, it's me. <laughs> but but to echo Anthony, um, a lot of uh, right now, if you're in high school, like classes are it. It's very transactional. You do an assignment, you get a grade. You do another assignment, you get a grade. College isn't like that. You don't need permission to learn something new or to do something. You just do it. You, you just it's different. You have a lot more freedom to pursue the things that you want to pursue. And so that's that's the magic of the, the whole college experience. Um, so you just do it. Yeah. If you want to do it, you'll find other people are thinking about the same kinds of things. Like for instance, right now I'm a judge for the Mayo business competition where the winner gets 30 grand if they win second place, you get 20 grand third place, you get 10 grand. You know, there's not like a minor or major really specifically for that, but you interact with people that are like-minded and you go ahead and you make yourself a, a business. So it's not only about the classes. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. I see some other questions in the chat about uh, from Melanie about um, broadcast and multimedia journalism uh, mixing well with IMM major. I think so. Um, in fact, um, the uh, when when you have a minor, you can actually double count one course for the minor and the major, and that's one of those minors that would probably just be very easy to do that with. So. Um, and um, if you have more specific questions about journalism, like I, uh, you know, Rhea, who's on the call, could, could probably talk to that um, since she was a double major. But um, like those, uh, the, the other programs within the School of Arts and Communication, so uh, journalism, professional writing, um, art and art history, um, and within art and art history, there's, there's fine art, there's graphic design, there's um, other, uh, others as well, uh, music and communication studies. Um, those all um, pair really well with IMM. Uh, so pretty, pretty common to have like double majors or minors um, with those. Also news outlets love the digital background. So if you're thinking about going into broadcast journalism, they will love you if you have an IMM minor or major paired. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to do things that weren't in my job description and I knew how to do it and it's all because of IMM. They, th they somehow thought you were a magical unicorn. They do, they really do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of going uh, top to bottom in the chat here. There's a question from Mark um, about uh, asking about if there's any changes to the program because of COVID, cut funding or otherwise. Um, I, not exactly. I mean, the, the, the college as a whole has, has, has made small cuts to department budgets. So like, you know, in our in our like operating funds it our budget is lower than it was last year um for for obvious reasons the costs have gone up for for the college um students aren't aren't staying on campus um but i but there haven't been um uh there have been layoffs on on some campuses but not at tcnj uh, no no word on 
no, no plans to cut any programs at this point. Um, so uh, all things considered that, that, you know, TCNJ came out of, or came out, I should say, we're still in COVID times, but um, TCNJ has, has been okay um, as far as like existing programs um, and, and faculty and, and staff and things like that. So I hope that answers the question, but if not, if there's any follow-up, feel free to ask. And without saying too much, because I probably we aren't allowed, but COVID um, had us think about a lot of things. So there's gonna be actually a lot of improvements post COVID, like huge ones that we're not allowed to talk about yet too much because they're not finalized, but it's gonna be a better place post COVID than it was pre COVID, which is something we're really excited about. Um, catching up on questions. So there's, uh, you can also, if, if you would prefer to, um, you can unmute yourself and ask the question that way too. I know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Lions TV, nice. Okay, so we're getting some, uh, yeah, more organizations. Uh, did anybody talk about WTSR yet? We got Lions TV, WTSR radio. Um, uh, there's a great radio television film program in the communication studies department um, that uh, for, for anyone interested in broadcast, yeah, uh, there's, there's places to get hands-on experience on campus. Um, there's also a, we also have a recording studio in our building, like a professional audio recording studio. So if you're like, wanting to record instruments or um, do music, um, you can do that. Um, what am I missing? Um, oh, there's a question for Tori, I think. Um, can you expand please on how IMM is more creativity focused than for example, computer science? Right, because you talked about that a little bit in your um, response. Yeah, so computer science is very focused on, here's some languages you're gonna learn, this is what data structures are, this is what algorithms are. Um, here's a project. When I press this button, I'm gonna put this input in and you should get this input out. And if I see a seven, then you get an A, but if I don't get a seven, then I'm gonna start picking apart your program. Uh, IMM's not really like that. <laughs> IMM is more like, here's this project, pick something you want to create. And yes, programming becomes a part of that, but it's, something nice because it's like a visual representation of what you're making. You're not just putting something into a command line and getting something back. It's like a whole experience. And like I said, you get to work with other people, um, other programmers that also like creating experiences. And I mean, it's like everyone says, it's kind of like a catch-all. <laughs> so it's like a very easy place to uh, fit in and learn. And I mean, I really love my time there, so I recommend it. Um, I'll just add to that because I was a CS major in college also, so I feel your pain, CS people. Um, but I love, you know, I, I love programming. Now I think I needed to find the creative piece, which I did in graduate school. Um, and I would never discourage anybody who's thinking about doing software engineering from majoring in computer science. Like I think our we have a great computer science program. Um, plus, since the IMM is here, you can always minor in IMM, or you can double major, which uh, Thendril, who's on the call, could talk more about if anybody has questions about that specifically. Um, but they, I think that my, my takeaway from hearing from students is that they pair really well together. Um, the students who, who tend to do them both um, are well positioned when they get out of here. Um, we, we've been, we've been talking like all, all positive stuff about IMM. I'm not going to ask people to talk, talk negative stuff about IMM, but like, do students have any challenges and like, how do you get around those challenges? Cause I do, you know, this is about IMM, but it's also about TCNJ. Like what, like generally as a TCNJ student, um, IMM is only, you know, like a little more than, and if you just take the required classes, it's a little more than a third of the classes that you take at TCNJ. So some people have talked about minors and majors, but Anything come to mind when I, that's not really a question, but does that prompt any, any ideas from anybody? I think we're all nerds. I think we just sort of have to accept that. Um, definitely, I, I have some thoughts about all of the other stuff at TCNJ. Um, academically speaking, uh, as I put in the, the chat here, I was a communication studies minor 
because I was as interested in the, the filmmaking process from pre to post production. Um, but I was also an honors student um, and the honors program has a small collection of, of courses that you need to take kind of like a minor. Um, and one of the things that I found in all of my liberal learning classes, I was able to really make it work for me because I picked the ones that sounded interesting um, to me. Some people sort of are like, oh, I'll just take the easiest class or whatever is like an easy A. And I was like, well, I'm interested in this specific thing. So I'm going to learn more about it. Um, like, one of the things that I'd thought about doing um, a little bit too late along in my academic career was creating an interdisciplinary major called storytelling. And that was largely inspired by a lot of the things that I was experiencing as cross-disciplinary in IMM. Um, so that, that I was a little bit too late along in my career at that point to uh, make that work for me, but it was just, I wanted to take women gender studies classes. I wanted to take my psychology classes. Like I took cognitive psychology that was so interesting. And I think it pairs really well with something like user experience because you get to learn about how people think and make decisions. Um, just as an, as an example, I think the only thing that didn't necessarily fit with all of the other things I was learning was astronomy, but that was, you know, that was still worked out. <laughs> um, I, I want to uh, respect people's time. It's a little after eight. Um, so uh, I think we can, um, I, I had asked guests um, if they're available to, to hang out a little bit longer. Um, so, um, so we'll, uh, we'll do that. But if anyone needs to leave, I want to give you permission to, to do that. Cause I know if I was a guest, I would probably feel like I needed to stay until like everybody else signed off. So, um, so feel free to sign off if you, um, if you need to now, but we'll, um, I'm going to hang out for a little bit. And this includes, um, you know, all the, all the current students and alums as well. Um, I don't want to keep you if you have things you need to get to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to hang out for a little bit. Um, and I guess until it's just me left, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> That's dangerous. I don't know. It's like, it's it like, sounds be. like a Mr. Beast contest. Well, it's like, am, am I, is someone going to like play chicken with me now and be like, how late is Fishburne going to stay up? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and thank, and yeah, I should say, thank you everybody for coming. Um, we are, um, we're going to edit this down and, and share it with, with folks, um, who, um, with all, with all the, um, prospective students. So, um, yeah, thanks. And thanks for your great questions too. Oh, can I add just one thing? Yeah. Any of the accepted students on the call? Um, hi, my name's Rachel. I'm the program assistant in the department. Um, I just wanted to do a shameless plug for our upcoming events. Uh, we sent you uh, information via Google form if you wanted to sit in on any IMM classes next week. So um, just take a look through that list and feel free to respond and we'll send you uh, meeting links uh, via your responses. And also um, we have another event, uh, Accept the Students Day on Saturday, is it April 10th, am I correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. At 1.30 uh, via Discord. The I, we have IMM has our own uh, Discord uh, server. So uh, also feel free to attend that as well. Awesome. Yep, and I just put a link to our to an invite to that Discord in the chat, and I'm trying to find a link to the form that Rachel, if you have that, could you put that in the chat? The form to sign up for for class visits next week. Um, I'd really encourage folks who who are who are thinking about IMM to to attend a class or two um, next week. And this this form that um, that we sent out uh, has has a list of classes you can select from, and you'll be able to join those via Zoom. Um, yeah, in my games class that Friday, actually, we're going to be doing, uh, we're, uh, students are going to be showing their latest, the latest iteration of their team game projects. Um, so, and a couple people on this call have taken that class and actually one person's in it right now. Um, I think my Friday class 
some people are showing off some stuff they've been making, but then we're going to start learning how to do 3D modeling and Fusion 360 to do 3D printing stuff. So if anybody wants to jump in on that, so it should be fun. How come I don't get the speaker view like everybody else? Yeah, <laughs> is my mic lower? I don't know. You are kind of quiet, John. Yeah, I'm yelling. I don't know. I'm at the farmhouse. I don't know. Like the, the old spirits are like taking my voice away from me or something. Yeah, this place is definitely haunted. I was on the phone with John. John, can I share the, this? Yeah, it's seriously. It's <laughs> I was on the real. phone like the with John this morning at like 11 o'clock or something. And he was like walking around outside at this at this house that he's staying at and there were, there were shotgun blasts going off in the background right next to me i felt it in my chest i, I was like you're where are you john you're really like out there in the yeah. middle of nowhere my next the neighbors next to me they had baby dolls like hanging from strings from the trees really weird stuff going on here yeah is that where the shotgun blast came from? I that think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy John's close, basically in, middle of nowhere. <laughs> in a horror. Have you movie considered right now. moving? <laughs> yeah, I love this. Are you kidding? This is like, I, yeah, I've never. This is a. It's just. It's so different than what I'm coming. To. Yeah. Are you gonna make it? Yeah. I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You no, know, we don't want you to end up like one of the baby dolls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a strange place, but you know, like it, you know, it's good to be open-minded for new experiences. I wanted something that was very different than because when do you get to live somewhere for three weeks? I can't study abroad, so like this is the closest thing to it. Right. Yep. So, um, can I? Um, I, maybe I shouldn't go here, but I'm going to go here. Um, you talked about like not a comp not a, a negative, but I, I do want to talk a little bit about. The kind of student that thrives in a program like IMM. And sometimes we get students that have a tendency to want to coast because they're like either chasing a grade or they're trying to get through something. IMM, if you're going to join IMM, it's, it's a group of people who actually want to do things, right? They want to get involved. They want to be engaged. They're not chasing grades. They're, they're chasing experiences and they're open-minded and they have goals and they're going to work towards bettering themselves. So it's it's not the kind of program of something you want to get through. It's something you actually want to enjoy fully and engage with the people. Um, and there's a little bit of less structure. So you're going to need those goals and you're going to need to find mentors and you're going to need to, you're going to need to like work at that because we're not going to tell you what to do every step of the way. Like there's some self-discovery. I think that's, that's part of the experience. And I think that's an important part of IMM that might be different than say, if you're going into like accounting or, uh, or a lot of the other disciplines, you know what I mean? Like we're not gonna handhold every step of the way, um, but we are gonna try to shape you and try to help you achieve any goal that you set out to do. Um, everyone who leaves IMM is a very different person, I guess. So I just wanna iterate that. Yeah, this is, this is not the kind of major you're just gonna kind of like coast through and get through it. And, I wanna, and just to, oh, go yeah, ahead. I don't know, soapbox done. I just, I just <laughs> wanna make sure this new group, yeah, these are, we are doers. Yeah, go ahead, Brett. Done. Oh, I was just gonna say on, on top of what you kind of said also earlier, John, um, was that a lot of the learning really takes place like outside the classroom. Like the classroom is a great place to, you know, to get great foundational knowledge, but like the time in between classes, I felt like I, you know, really was able to take advantage. I got to go trips to Google and get like hands-on experience there in New York. So like really take advantage of all the things that happen on campus um, or even just with your friends um, in between the classes. I feel like that is just as important as actually going to your classes. And classes are important too, but yeah, the, the time in between for sure. And what I was gonna say is that we do um, a senior thesis and the, the thesis can be some, has, has a lot of latitude. So you can really pick something that you wanna do when you grow up. If, like, if, you're, if you're like a young Sergey Brin and you wanna do Boolean search, you could start, start your own little Google. Um, so uh, some people do that and they kind of work toward a business. Um, but, you know, you can, if there's something, um, you know, like a game you always wanted to make or a, um, a, a video, a documentary that you wanted to do, you could start working on that and thinking about that all throughout your career. Then when you get to be a senior, you can really polish it and make it into something. But the thing that John said is so important uh, it, it is, you get, like a lot of things in life, you get out of what you put into it. It doesn't happen by magic. If you're going to, don't, don't come into it thinking that 
um, it happens on autopilot because it, it um, the technology is always changing. We're going to figure it out together, uh, but you, it takes work. It's, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's not really for wimps. You, you have to be ready to commit yourself. Oh, and one more real quick thing, just to add on top of that. Um, don't wait and ask permission to learn something. So if you know, like, oh, I want to take a games or, you know, know more about games and games one, you can't take till your sophomore or junior year. Uh, you don't have to, to wait to start to learning it. Yes, you'll learn a lot in that course, but you have Google and the internet at your fingertips. Like if you want to start and you're interested in it, just just start. Speaking of Google, I probably shouldn't share this, but Google just just launched these like certificates, um, <laughs> these certificate programs via Coursera where you can go and I don't know how long they take, maybe like six months or something. I think it's six months. Uh, yeah, so you can go get certified in, I think UX is one of them. Um, I, sh I shouldn't be sharing this because they're, you know, presumably they are now. <laughs> Just go do the Google certificate. <laughs> That's our competition. <laughs> um, right. I mean, obviously you're not going to get a lot of what you will get in, in a, you know, in-person college experience from from one of those certificates, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't check it out and and see if it's something you're into. Like if you, if you see these like, because there's, there's a lot of, like, as you look at careers, there's a lot of like kind of sexy words out there, right? Like UI UX is like a new thing. Like data science is a new thing. And like, what is that about? Um, that sounds like a cool career. Like um, it's hard to really tell exactly what you'll be doing day to day in these types of jobs, unless you get kind of get your feet wet a little bit. So, um, so yeah, go, go take one of those Google, you know, certificate programs to see if it's something you're into and then bring that into one of your IMM classes um, when you have a project to do. And one of the things you're going to get from college is that you have four years to invest in yourself. So you can, you can find something and then run with it as fast as you can. Like this is for you. You're not trying to impress anybody else. You're just trying to invest in yourself. And I think that time um, is special. You're not going to get that. Um, there's only a couple of times in life you get to invest that much time into yourself. So it's uh, take advantage of it. Don't take it for granted. Do any, any, um, I, I'm starting to notice that it's, it's mostly just faculty talking. So I'm curious if any of the, any of the current students or, or even the alums, like if you were in the, in the position of these, um, these prospective students, what would you be thinking about? Like what questions should they be asking themselves? Um, like what concerns would you have, um, given the uncertainty that we're in right now because of COVID, um, and how that's changed work? Um, yeah. Uh, there's lots of questions, but you can pick any one of those. Uh, I raised my hand, but I'm going to just fill the silence because I have an actual answer. Um, one of the things I was really worried about when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in, in college and in life was, I don't know anything. How am I supposed to know anything more? And it's like, it doesn't make sense. Um, because you're going to school to learn things that you don't know yet. So just because you don't know it yet, as long as you're like open-minded to learning it, then you will succeed. Um, you need to be open to it and to work for it, of course, but um, it's you don't have to know anything or everything just before you start college at all. Um, you can learn as you go and find what you're really interested in that way. Uh, I'll jump in here. Uh, I think one question that I didn't have maybe that I should have had, or at least I came upon maybe a little later was, uh, what do I feel passionately about and how do I go about finding it? I think if you look at everything, just because I think here it's been mentioned, like there's so many clubs, there's so many activities. At the end of the day, though, it's your experience and you get to choose what you want and everyone's experience is going to look different from each other's. For instance, I didn't participate in a lot of clubs. I, when I figured out that what I felt passionately about was design or that that was the thing that had some potential to be my passion, my job, then I went after that really strongly by, you know, like I used to find courses. I used to find people online and just message them and ask them, how did you do this? And going through this entire process again, I feel like I'm in your shoes again, because I'm like, and again, did all of this stuff for business school, talked to so many people again. And 
it surprises me how intentional people are like in all of the business schools that I've talked to, the, people are doing like pre MBA internships just to first, because in an MBA, you can go into so many different fields. They're trying to figure out, you know what, like these four things could be things I may be interested in. Now, how do I vet each of these? And it's a very intentional process that they take to figure out their goals. So one student, for instance, like he's now doing like a VC internship just because he had that opportunity and is using his pre MBA to vet whether that's a job he'd be interested in. So now he goes into his experience knowing so much more about what he wants to do. And so I would just say like, yeah, there are so many clubs there make sure that you're intentional about what you're taking on. Like if you're taking on like seven clubs, you know, like what is the purpose of taking all of those seven clubs? Like, would you rather spend your time in two clubs that you really put your energy into than seven clubs that you intermittently visit just because like everyone's doing it or you just want that in your resume? Like all of those things just tend to not help a lot. You want to be intentional, at least if you're taking seven clubs, have a reason why. Maybe like I'm trying out these seven clubs because I want to figure out whether I'm interested in marketing or design or this, and I will solely vet out these opportunities to understand what I want to do. So if you sort of have these guiding principles as you're going through anything that you take that intentionally gets you back to why you're in college, like what you want to figure out, that really helps. And I would just be intentional. And it's okay if you're not doing something that someone else is doing, you could be pursuing it in a completely different way. And that's totally fine. That's great. That's I feel like we should just end on that, but I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm staying here till 830 at least. So um, I, that reminds me, I mean, I was talking with John earlier about a student who is, who was just basically doing too much right now. And like, like we can see it, like, it's easy. It's hard to tell, or, or maybe sometimes it's hard to admit to yourself that you're doing that. <laughs> um, but it's easy, you know, if you have friends who, who you trust, um, they'll usually tell you because <laughs> they yeah, can tell. She actually texted me. She goes, the she, did she drop one? Gone. She oh, she dropped one. So, she so her, she had to quit a job. She had to quit a job today. I, I talked her into quitting her job. Then she, she quit one of them to, to um, free up more time. Cause you got to take care of yourself first. You know what I mean? Otherwise you're not being productive. So to, to, to be clear, we, we're not, we don't, that's one of the things we do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go around trying to get students to quit jobs. I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> No, but what Nivi said, there's priorities, right? And sometimes there's, you don't want to let somebody down and it's at the expense of your own like mental health or product productivity. Yeah. And part of college is like learning how to, like learning how to do difficult things, like quitting a job that maybe is taking too much of your time. That's not productive towards your end goal. And that's, yeah. that's a skill that you have to learn. It's not easy. It's not no. fun, but it's part of the process. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's not like, it's not something tangible like coding or animation. It's like a life skill. Cause so. it can feel painful. It can feel painful. Like you're letting somebody down. I had a, a conversation with a student one time who was talking about like not wanting to, like he didn't want to drop a CS minor. He wasn't going to finish a CS minor and he didn't want to drop it because, and I was, I was trying to understand why. And he said he didn't want to let his parents down. And I, you know, I was like, is that like, do you really think like, and his parents are really supportive, like loving parents. And I, you know, I was like, do you really think that you're, do you really think your parents would be disappointed with you if you didn't do this, this one thing? And, and he, you know, he realized that, no, like a, a lot of times we're, it's, it's about us. Like we're, we are going to be disappointed somehow, or we're feel like we're letting ourselves down. It's this kind of interesting, um, it's an interesting dilemma, right? Where, where, um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> well, I, all, what Nivy said really, yeah. Uh, also, like, don't think that after the four years of college, you have to have everything figured out. Like, college isn't the end of your learning; it's really just the start of like your own self learning and not having to to learn what someone else is telling you. So, you know, after college is, is you know I've continued to learn a whole bunch of new things. I've gone for a master's in a completely new field. And it's like so once you're done with college, it's not over. You know, that's when it just starts. <laughs> Right, we heard from, I think we have th at least three alums who are either in master's programs or thinking about master's programs. Sorry if I'm leaving somebody out. But. I'm just gonna throw this out there, like not to counter, but also just to augment. Um, I wasn't going to consider a master's program 
because I wasn't sure exactly, it's very specifically fine tuned exactly what I wanted to do. And I feel like even more than your bachelor's, master's programs are really built for learning a specific thing. But I've still been learning, um, whether that's like through educational apps like Solo Learn or through actual training on the job or like looking up tutorials on WordPress, like there's a lot of paths to education. And I think that the structure that college provides is excellent, but um, when it comes to after college, yes, you can continue learning, but it doesn't have to be more college. <laughs> Yeah, I love Nibby's comment in the chat. It's so true. <laughs> like, it's so short. If you're going to do study after this, it's so short. Like when I, I'm so grateful that I worked for two years before going, going to grad school, because I feel like by then I was like so hungry for exactly what I went to school for. I was like ready. You know, it wasn't like college where I, I like I was going, um, I, my, no, I was the first in my family to go to college. So I didn't know what I was doing. And my, uh, <laughs> so my friend group happened to all like a bunch of smart, a bunch of nerds. So like I went to college, you know, with, cause they were, and, um, but I just, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, like, but grad school, like I was ready. Um, so it, it is really, it, the intentionality that Nivi mentions, I think is, is really important. And you get that, you know, after spending four years and maybe like a couple years at, at a workplace, um, you start to learn what you what you really like doing and what you really don't like doing. A lot of times it's not what you expected um, when you were younger. I also found that uh, working after your undergrad makes you a little over prepared for grads, or maybe that was just for like my experience. Like I, I worked for four years before I decided to go back to school and now I'm bored <laughs> in my first year. Um, I mean, the faculty assured me that I would be bored for the first year and a half, but I guess that's a good thing. Hats off to TC and J and like my employment experience for preparing me, but um, it's still a good experience. I'm still pro grad school. <laughs> it's interesting that, expensive. oh, sorry. Mine was expensive, so I'm, I'm glad it worked out, but it was uh, grad schools. Ugh. It's a lot more debt. Um, mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind. But not yeah, for this, Brett. Brett did it right. Yeah, Brett did it right. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about grad school anymore, but I want to say that uh, I guess to, to to I think we we only have one one guest left, maybe. But uh, to, to to we're recording this, John. I guess like to to plug IMM, right? Like we everybody in IMM. I think with with I don't think there's any exceptions to this. Everybody has had some other career. Like we're not, you know, we're not academics who kind of shot right through. Like when I started at TCNJ, I felt so weird because I had I had worked five years as a at another faculty position and like um, had you know worked a few years at Motorola in between all that and like got to TCNJ and all these people who were starting with me, they they were like, oh yeah, I just finished my postdoc at at Johns Hopkins or like wherever and and I you know, that like literally they've just been in academia like the entire, like their entire careers. And I, no, I mean, there's nothing, I'm nothing against that. I, just, I was just like, where am I? <laughs> it felt very unusual. Luckily, uh, Belinda Hakes, who started at the same time as me, she, some of you may know, may know Belinda, um, a graphic design professor, uh, was, was just like me. She had worked, come from another position and, um, and uh, had also done work professionally, you know, outside of, outside of um, school. So, yeah. Um, thanks, just everybody. I think it's just us. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is just us. The gang's all here. <laughs> hey. <laughs>